This movie time is brought to you by the Gateway Film Center, 1550 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. For their details and showtimes online at gatewayfilmcenter.org. The award-winning It's Movie Time is produced by John DeSando. Listen to the shows and read reviews at Listen to the shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Kevin Carr. And we know this is It's Movie Time, buddy. It is. <laughs> and it's time for a well for a comedy yeah. called Let's Have a Shout Out for The Hollers. The Hollers. Let, let, <laughs> let us holler at you here for but a minute. Kev, Listen, mm -hmm. uh, the hollers mm -hmm. about a dysfunctional family. Uh oh, here we go. Dysfunctional Indeed. family comedy, <laughs> right. stable of award season. Right. Um, is it a, a romantic comedy? Is it just a comedy? Is it a comedy drama? How would you characterize it? Well, I mean, it's it's a comedy, but um, I mean, it's a comedy in the way like Sideways was a comedy or or, or, or something like that. Yeah. It's not. I mean, this is not like Wedding Crashers. More you know, like Garden State, would you say? Do yeah, except that? I hate a garden stuff. Right, yeah, yeah, but no, but you're right. That kind of that independent yeah. comedy. But I would say dysfunctional family comedy. I think is, is okay. how I would I would say it because you get these all the time. You get these showing up where, uh, you know, not like the vacation movies, which is a family comedy, <laughs> not for families, but about families. But this is dysfunctional. Everybody has their own problems and their own baggage. <laughs> so mom has been diagnosed with with a brain tumor. Yes. And this. That cannot be cured by Jenny Craig. The salvation, right, and that is a good bit. The salvation of the film is Margot Martindale, but unfortunately, she's not in the whole film. Well, here's the thing that was interesting when I saw it, is I've seen these before, and some of them I, I've really enjoyed, like The Family Stone, which was a wonderful, dysfunctional family Christmas movie. Well, my favorite is Little Miss Sunshine. Little Miss Sunshine's another great one, yeah. where it's these, everyone's just insane and crazy it's like you're your own family everybody's nuts <laughs> the but, royal tenenbaums <laughs> royal, royal ten i just watched that this weekend a great one but then there's ones i hated like august osage county oh, we, oh but kevin because, that's not a comedy well but it's that dysfunctional, it's dysfunctional family. right <laughs> and just everyone's just so awful <laughs> that there's no redeeming value and nothing entertaining about them so there has to be something likable about the characters and this one started out where everyone's got their quirks and their problems right. and their and their baggage and I was like oh and I started to cringe at the beginning because I was like oh this is gonna be the, it's just gonna be uncomfortable. Well, look at not only do you have Martindale mm. as the maternal yeah. force here, the matriarch, you also have Richard Jenkins, Jenkins playing her husband. Now you can't tense. go wrong with that guy. Well, yeah, I mean, he, it, it is a great cast, and you got Charlton Copley. And John Krasinski who also directs. Right. As as the as the sons, uh, you've also got you know um, Anna Kendrick as as uh, John Krasinski's is his girlfriend who's pregnant, but right. he's having doubts. She's kind of straight in this one. I mean, she's not yeah. this comic. As she's she she's a little bit high strung, but then again, she's pregnant. And she I mean, like really pregnant. <laughs> And I'll tell you, uh, a pregnant Anna Kendrick is really quite adorable. I think so, too. But, Kev, I want to tell you flat out, and I know you enjoyed it more than I did. I could just tell. But these four, four of these guys mm. drove me to distraction. First of all, son uh, Ron. Yeah. The ne'er-do-well son. That's my, that's Charlotte Copeland. Yeah, right, Copeland. And I just, he just annoyed me. He was so feckless and... So wimpy. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just, you know, try going over to the ex-wife, was it, and 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 stalking her right like across the street. Right, and and, <laughs> and then you life. had the Reverend Dan. Yes. Uh, Josh Groban, who did a fairly good job, but I don't know. He was he was so limp wristed. But he was so <laughs> even. He was not. The, <laughs> no, he was. Th that was the point. I think is that he was off. From what your standard, generally, if you got a guy who's stalking his ex-wife, the new beau is going to be a little more aggressive. But this guy was just so even-handed. That's a good. Just like I know, I know this is a good argument. And, th and this is a cast that um, Krasinski, I think, he's worked with before. Yeah. He worked with Josh Groban because he worked on The Office. Right. Oh yeah. And he's got a bit of a knack for comedy. Well, all right, then let me complain about Dad Don. Yeah. Too much crying. Come on, Kevin, that's, please. That's kind of the point. That was the joke. <laughs> and it was right. And, I, and then finally, uh, Charlie Day as Jason. I was not. I normally <laughs> love. He, wasn't he the nurse? Yeah, I normally love Charlie Day. <laughs> that that little side story, that was one I wasn't wild about. Um, because, But again, even he, he was playing a little bit against type. 
Because Charlie Day usually plays that high strung crazy man. Okay. And he was a little more of a straight guy in this one. <laughs> so, I, I mean, that, that little one, I wasn't... And his little storyline and how it dealt with um, John Krasinski's ex, uh, ex-girlfriend was okay. But, you know, I gotta say, I found them very endearing. They were insane people. Yes, but I, they were endearing. Yeah, you know, where, where they they moved to annoying for me because I always love eccentric and mm. endearing. But it just and I wonder if I just wasn't put off by Krasinski's his his gentle mien, the the kind of thing. I think he was trying to make the film very lovable and mm. very likable, and I felt it. I even felt it in his character. I felt yeah. it, and I thought he he kind of per, uh, pervaded that film as director and as the central male lead. So yeah. I just. Kevin, I just, I just couldn't identify with it completely, but I agree. The cast is great. The cast is great. Well, and I think part of the thing that I liked about it, which, which I was more forgiving of this than you were, is, you know, when I said that we were having a conversation before we started recording, we are yeah. talking about Sully and how Sully doesn't have the big Oscar clip in it. It right. doesn't have the big emotional breakdown. Right. And this movie also doesn't. Now, Sully didn't need to, because you got Tom Hanks and Clint Eastwood, to, so established in their, good one, yeah. in their works that right. they don't need the Oscars. But here's one where normally in a movie like this, you have everything come to a head, and everybody is screaming and yelling, and it does it does kind of follow this almost predictable pattern of dysfunction. That's a good word, predictable. Yeah. <laughs> but what was nice about this is everyone acted it, it, and think of your own family it's very rare for you know maybe once every 10 years for there to be a massive hyper explosion at like thanksgiving dinner right where everybody right, right. usually it's, it's always just, there but it doesn't come yeah the usually they're just grumbling and, <laughs> and some tension There's here something. and i thought that it handled that and resolved these situations realistically out of that maybe a little bit contrived at times but but i mean it was i thought it was i like the fact that it didn't it didn't go mean and, and yeah, it's so and easy I, to go and Again, I think that's this. partly Krasinski, mm -hmm. uh, who is like that. But I, there is a, 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 I don't know if you can call it an Oscar moment. I like your okay. challenge on that. The moment when she says she doesn't want to do the operation. Yeah. I mean, I thought that that was, it, which was different from most other parts of the It film. wasn't big. Yeah. Yeah. It, but, but she is, the, as anybody would be, as she's about to be wheeled in to have her head cut open, mm -hmm. she says something. If she screams, I don't want to do this. Yeah. And she has been the anchor, the center of this film. Mm -hmm. And suddenly she goes kind of like anybody would go and say, I don't think I want to do this. Yeah. Well, and even her, it's like she doesn't, you, you, you starts off the movie and you think she's going to be this cantankerous grandmother who who is so critical of her kids. And, but no, she, you, you get to the point and you're like, Oh, she's kind of a nice, she, nice old lady. Yeah. I, I, again, I would say I really wanted more of her in this yeah. movie, and I thought that she was great. And, and I'm reminded, what film was she in? Kept most prominent. Everything. Gosh. I always get her not confused, but uh, Anne Dowd and her seem to play very similar mm -hmm. characters. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we'll be seeing more of her even. Uh, and I know she does a lot of TV and film work. Margot she, yeah. Martindale. You've but seen her, even if you don't know the name. Oh my gosh, like, you will, no, no. You will, you'll know her face. Yeah. Kevin Carr. Mm -hmm. Let's give a shout out here for the Hollers. Holla. <laughs> and Kevin, what grade would you award this comedy? I'm giving this uh, an A. I really <laughs> enjoyed it. Good. Yeah. All right, great. And for once in a long time, I'm awarding it a C plus. Look at how we're fighting over this. Wow. Thing. <laughs> Normally you go a little nicer. I would have expected a B. I, I know, I know, I know. But I'll tell you this. I don't think our audience could go wrong to go see this film. There's something there for everybody to like. It's definitely worth checking out. <laughs>